Hello, everyone. Okay, we're back. We are back. I had to make sure everything was okay with my guest. She should be logging on here in, a, here in a second. But again, this is just like you, everyday people, amazing stories. We are here every Tuesday, 7.30 p.m. to 8 p.m. Central Standard Time, listening to stories from people just like you. So everyday people, amazing stories. If you have a story or know someone who does, and we all have a story, I'd love to hear from you. Love to have you on the show. Let me get my guest in here. Let's see, Nakia. Let's see, Nakia. Nakia, Nakia, Nakia. There you are, beautiful. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I, I know we had a few technical I, difficulties. Oh, that's okay. It happens. So I was just letting everybody know that we are here 7.30 to 8 p.m. every Tuesday. Central Standard Time, just like you. If you have a story, and we know you do, um, we'd love to hear from you. And if you know someone who has a story, please have them DM me. This is just about positivity. Um, the key is going to share her story with you. It's about positivity, positive vibes. We're going through a pandemic. We're going through social injustice. We're going through a lot of things right now. And these stories are no, no stories too big, no stories too small. So if you have a story, we'd love to hear from you and uh, get in contact with me and I'd love to have you as a guest. So Nakia, I have, I was just thinking like, I legit probably haven't seen you in like 20 years, like in I real life. Know. I and know, so, and you're as beautiful as ever. You are too, I mean, I just miss you. I wish I could hug you. I'm like, I miss you. <laughs> oh my goodness, it's just same, like- Same great smile. Crazy, it's just, but you, I mean, I was just this thinking today, I'm like, okay, so her story is, so, Nakia, I was Nakia's RA in college. So you were, you were. it's this story is amazing to me because you've gone from Nakia to like <laughs> global corporate business woman, career mother. I was, I was so, really a, a little country pumpkin when <laughs> <laughs> I walked into Meredith Hall that <laughs> ooh, that hot August day and 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 met you. Gosh, I was, yeah, you're right. I was it was I was 18 years old. That was that was actually more than two decades ago, Taryn. That was, Don't. was slightly more than two decades ago. <laughs> <laughs> well, tell us, like, like I said, so start off. So tell us how you've gone from Nakia, yes. whom we all know and love, to businesswoman, who we all know and love, global <laughs> career woman, who we all know and love. So you tell us that really journey. You, you make it sound so impressive, Taryn. <laughs> you are. It is impressive. So tell us. Tell us your journey. Tell us where you, where, you know, how you've gone there. What, what's your, you know, tell us your journey. All right. Well, um, you know, when I, when I walked into the, into the halls of Meredith mm -hmm. and met my first very wonderful um, RA who happened to be Taryn Lamp, <laughs> now Howard at the time, um, I just, I, I went to college and I kind of knew that I was good at math and science and I wasn't, I wasn't super sure what I wanted to do, but um I went to, I think the, the program was called MITE, um, and it was a Purdue program, and it was for engineering. Um, I think it, I'm, it, I'm pretty sure it's still around. It was a wonderful intro. I had a lot of fun. I had, I met um, wonderful friends. One of them you, you had on your show, Aisha, who ended mm -hmm. up being my roommate um, in college. And, um, and I kind of just was like, okay, I'll, I think I'm going to do this engineering thing. It's, it seems to be hot. People are getting jobs. Um, <laughs> <laughs> along the way, I think that a couple months before I actually decided what I was going to major in, I saw a Business Week article and it, it, it listed all these engineering jobs and um, it listed the income of each engineering job. And I'm, I'm flipping through it. I'm like, okay, well, I'm, I need to make some money coming out of college. And chemical engineering was number two. And number one, I think at the time was um, aeronautical engineer. And I was like, I'm, I'm not flying planes. And that is literally <laughs> how I picked chemical engineering. Because, okay. um, you know, at that time, it was just so different for me. Like, I, I knew I needed a job. Um, I had four years to do it. I couldn't go back home. I needed to make money. And so it kind of seemed like the safe thing to do at the time. And I ended up um, working in research and development for a company. Um, along the way, I realized that... Um, kind of wanted more. So even though I'm, I'm naturally very creative, 
um, I wanted to learn about more. I wanted to learn about the business. Like, mm -hmm. how do you bring a product to life? Essentially, mm -hmm. was was what I um, I wanted to find out. And um, people kept talking about business school, and I was like, all right, yeah, let's do it. And I kind of just decided to apply. And, and over the course of a couple months, it was um, thinking back on it. I I think back. I'm like, man, I was really crazy. Mm -hmm. um, but I did it, and um, and that was kind of my entry into brand management at that time. And so I basically, what I learned how to do was um, take a lot of what I learned in engineering, which was like, how do you develop a product? Mm -hmm. um, and I learned how to market it. So mm -hmm. all those things, right? You can have a great product and no one knows, no one knows about it. Mm -hmm. um, so how do you get people interested? How do you tell them about it? Um, how do you build loyalty? How do you talk to customers about it? Um, how do you optimize um, kind of bringing your product to market? So all those things I learned how to do as I grew my career along the way. Mm -hmm. And so that's kind of um, where I am right now. So I, I feel like um, even though I'm a long way from where I started, I still brought, carry a lot of the things that I learned. And, um, and now I work for, quite interestingly, um, it's an animal health division of a pharmaceutical company. And um, I kind of started in marketing. And now I, um, I have a global role. So I work across um, the company in very different capacities. Um, some of it's marketing, some of it's not um, these days. Some of it's um, more general management. Some of it's a little bit of um, distribution. It's, it's kind of all over the place, but um, it gives me kind of a different perspective to see kind of the ins and outs of the company. And, um, and right before COVID hit, I was actually in the midst of, of moving my family to Germany mm -hmm. um, and then the pandemic hit and um, lots of countries closed their borders. So <laughs> we're sort of kind of waiting for things to open back up. But that's kind of, that was like kind of where I started to kind of now. I think I always tell people B school was one of the best things I did. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I think going, like you said, going back to school. Um, Cause I feel like when, you know, when you get your undergrad, like you fly like yeah. a, 36,000 foot view, you know, and then B school gives you this strategic view where you can fly it like a 50, 60,000 foot view, you know? So I feel like going yeah. back to school was one of the, you know, best things I did just, just overall, just to learn just how, like you said, how things run, um, to see yeah. things from different perspectives and different levels, whether you want to go there or not, I think, you know, whether yeah. you want to go to that level or not, um, I think it was one of the best things I ever did just to understand business, you know, and to, and to fly, like I said, yeah. be able to fly at that 50,000 foot view and still be able to fly, you know, on, on the ground. So I, I, you know, I just, I think that's one of the best things someone could do um, if they're, if they're able. You're definitely, I encourage people to take some time to work. So I worked in between going to, mm -hmm. to business school. Yeah. I was definitely a little bit more grown up by the time I got to business school. So maybe not as fresh faced as when you remember me <laughs> walking through those doors. Um, and yeah, I, I was a little bit more, um, I was a little bit more mature. And for B, for B school, for me, I, I feel like I had a lot more fun in, in business school than I did in um, at chemical engineering at Purdue. I, I felt like I was you know, kind of studying all the time, but it was a great experience that I actually, during business school, I almost forgot about this. I spent... Um, about two months in Kenya um, oh. as part of a project um, in business school and worked with all these like local women's um, co-ops. And it was just a really great experience um, and it changed my life. So um, it, nice. it gave me just more of a global perspective. Um, <clears throat> it, it gave me a different view of the world. It, it actually inspired me to um, inspired kind of that love of travel of getting out and mm -hmm. really, um, you know, really immersing myself in wherever I am. So that's kind of what we try to do now, even, um, you know, a lot more grown up now with a preteen and a teenager, if you can believe it, uh -huh. sometimes can't, but, um, but passing along that experience that I had. And it, it started in business school when I went to um, Kenya as part of a project. Right. Yeah, I, I, we were like in parallel universes and didn't know it because I kind of thinking that way as well. I mean, I went abroad before um, school, but that really got me thinking, you know, this can be done because I because I live there, right? Yeah. So you're there for, for a long amount of time, not just for two weeks, you, you know, you're kind of living there. And like you said, submersing yourself 
you know, in the culture and just, you know, learning so much about global business. So that's also very cool. So give us some lessons maybe um, that mm. you've learned along the way. Some, some of Nakia's pearls that she's Ooh. learned along the way of, you know, travel and like I said, yeah. business. And, and you also are, you know, you mentioned it, you know, I think it's important to let people know that you are juggling, you know, wifehood and motherhood and career. Mm. And, you know, nowadays that is, um, you know, that's definitely to the forefront, right? Like yeah. we are definitely as women um, coming to the forefront. So, you know, give yeah. us some advice or some pearls. Oh, oh, you hit one. I mean, juggling is probably a good way to describe it because I think <laughs> I learned a long time ago that what they used to tell women, particularly um, coming out of business school was this, I mean, it's quite frankly, a lie that you can have it all. And I learned very quickly that um, that is just not the case. Mm -hmm. um, you know, for me in my career, there were definitely peaks and valleys. So there were times where, mm -hmm. um, and you know, people might feel awful about this, but there were times when I was able to put more into my career. And then there were, there were also times where um, I needed to be much more um, present for, you know, my family. So, mm -hmm. you know, I do have a husband. He also works. He also travels. I actually met him at Purdue. Mm -hmm. um, he might have snuck into my dorm room and there to <laughs> while you were my RA, maybe, but ah, I don't remember yeah. that. I really don't. <laughs> um, but and, you know, so he, he works, he travels, um, and then we have, you know, two kids with a, a busy schedule. So I think the, mm -hmm. the narrative that you can have this, um, you know, you can, you're expected to do everything is, mm -hmm. is, is, is doing a disservice to, um, to, you know, women. And I just feel like sometimes it, it creates this picture and, and we feel like we have to, you know, do it all. Um, mm -hmm. And that's just not true. A couple of, I mean, I can't say I'm, I'm still learning Taryn. So mm -hmm. I think we those, all are <laughs> that wisdom. Is, it's still, <laughs> it's still coming, but I think along the way, um, one of the things that I learned about myself, I mean, I, I knew this, but, um, I have always been an introvert. So for me, I tend to build, um, mm -hmm. relationships, but they're very close relationships and I keep them for years. Like I married the extrovert. So he's an, he's enough of a chatter for mm -hmm. both of us. Um, and I think I used to get hurt a lot, um, mm -hmm. as I was growing up because people often perceive that as, um, you know, standoffish, um, oh, the common comment was she stuck up. Um, mm -hmm. and then, you know, growing up, you, you're trying, still trying to figure it out, right? You mm -hmm. know, you're, um, you're, you know, you're growing, you're maturing, you're learning along the way. What I did learn as an adult though, is that it's okay to be that way. It, it just means that I have to kind of work harder. It doesn't mean that I don't value or want relationships. I just have to put in, I have to put in a lot of effort. I have to really um, make sure that I'm engaging with people, mm -hmm. but I also want to tell people up front who I am. So I don't apologize for it. I just say, mm -hmm. look, naturally my tendency is I'm, I'm quite shy. So I'm a little bit more um, reserved. It takes me a little while. Um, and this is kind of, this is kind of who I am. So yeah. you know, don't be shocked about it. Um, and then that kind of breaks, the, you know, it kind of helps me as I got older, break the ice. Mm -hmm. So that, that perception of me being this person was not, um, you know, people knew up front, hey, this is who she is. And so I found that that worked for me along the way. Um, another okay. one would, um, would be just listening. So I think, I think everyone needs a good, a friend who's a good listener in their mm -hmm. relationship. I think that for some of my friends, hopefully, um, I'm a good listener. I think it works because I, I tend to be that introvert, but, um, I think what it allowed me to do, especially in my career is like, you have to, you have to take a step back and listen in order to identify why things are happening. So if, um, I'll give you an example, like I'm working on a, a big, um, brand and we're losing share. Well, you can't, I've, and I've seen people do this. They come in and they're like, oh, I know the problem right off. I know exactly what it is. And I feel like if you don't take the time to listen to your, what, your, what consumers are saying, um, when I think about my job or listen to what customers are saying and really seek to understand, um, you know, kind of their point of view, their perspective, that's most of the problem. So if, you, if you're a good listener, if you value that as a skill, you're actually well on your way to solving the problem at, when you are getting to a solution because listening helps you uncover what the real problem is. 
And I, I think that can apply personally yes. and professionally for me. And I think personally, as I see what um, is happening in this current environment, and it's a struggle because mm -hmm. I think there are days where um, I just get so sad about, you know, what's happening. And also, um, you know, social media has been very disappointing for me because I feel like I'm learning so much about people that um, have been in mm -hmm. my space. At times I really don't want to, I don't want to know because it makes me feel differently about them. But mm -hmm. I think from a personal perspective, even if I don't agree with people, um, for me, it is so important that I understand um, their perspective, mm -hmm. kind of where they're getting their facts from. I want to understand that um, because even though I don't, I, I could fundamentally disagree with you and I will never agree with you. At least I have a starting point if I ever seek to change or, or entertain that conversation or actually, you know, drive real change with you mm -hmm. um, is understanding, you know, kind of where, where you're coming from. Um, and to do that, you know, you have to kind of, you have to listen and it's, it's tough because, yeah. you know, at times I'm like, you know, it's, it's real easy to make a judgment <laughs> real quick, you know, yeah. <laughs> um, but that's, it's the only way that you'll get to, um, you know, any common understanding. Mm -hmm. And some people you'll just never be able to change. And you just right, right. You know? um, I think that's a good one. I, I, um, I tell this, I, my husband's back in the back room, so he'll probably hear me say this, but um, we learned in marriage counseling and premarital yeah. counseling before we even got married, the seek to understand more than to be understood. Mm. And like you said, the listening and the trying to understand, even if you take that to consumers, right? Yeah. Like it's a similar thing. It's like, how can I understand what my consumers are, are yeah. feeling and saying and doing versus having them try to understand what you're putting to them, you know? Yeah. And that can go, like you said, personally or professionally, like seek to understand more than to be understood. And, and that was a, like I said, a pearl I learned in premarital counseling and, our, in, our six year anniversary is coming up. Yeah. And in a few weeks, and yeah. I still carry that along with me personally and professionally. And then, yeah. you know, I think that you also mentioned a, a good thing when you, you say, give yourself permission to just be okay with, with, with you. Right. And mm -hmm. for people to, um, you know, like embrace themselves, you know, because people can say stuff about all of us, and it does, it does wear on you, you know, and yeah. you're like, oh my goodness, am I doing this wrong? Am I doing this right? Do I need to be more, like you said, more extroverted? Do I need to be more introverted? I mean, because I think I'm an extrovert, but sometimes um, I, I'm like, do I need to be more introverted? Because people think I'm too much of an extrovert. Because there's another saying, it says um, people, there are two types of people in the world, people who um, don't say anything and wish they would have, and people who say something and wish they wouldn't. And I'm like, well, that's definitely me to say something and wish I wouldn't, you know, but, but also I just, like you said, tend to embrace that and use that as how, just like what I'm doing now with this show, I'm a talker. So yeah. I just wanted this positivity to be in the world. And how can I use that talking, that extrovertness, if you will, to, to impact and be a difference maker. And it's by bringing people like yourself on and people listening to your story. And that's how I chose to serve and still use what people may seem to think is, you know, she's too much of an extrovert, right? You made you a great counselor. Yes, you did. Well, counselor. One. Hey, Brayden, I'm on Instagram. Live. Can he believe it? Huh? Can he believe it? He probably. <laughs> well, not to your speakers. This is my life. I'm accountable what, what for it. For something? He's looking for his speakers. Oh, okay. I mm -hmm. thought you said he said sing or something. I was like, wait, 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 wait. Put him back on. Put him on here. Whoa. No. Whoa. no. I am the finder. Uh, I obviously know where everything is, even if it's not mine. That's did, also my role. Did he find them, most importantly? I don't have no idea. <laughs> but I, I think you gave two good pieces of advice to, to be okay with you, right? Yeah. And to, I like that you also said, you let people know up front. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, I don't, I, you know, I think some people will do that. Some people won't do that, but I think that it's good that you kind of like, especially probably in your role where you have, you know, a, maybe a higher profile role where people see you and you kind of just want them to understand that, Hey, you're just kind of surveying the scene. You know, yeah. this is just, this is just Nakia. Don't, 
don't, I'm not hurting your feelings. I'm not going way far left or way far right. I'm just, this is just who I am. So I like that piece of advice too. And I like the, um, like I said, the listening, because that is something I need to keep, you know, pushing to myself. Like I said, since I'm, since I am a, a talker. You change who you are. <laughs> no, I just think it's just good advice. You know, it's just good advice to remember, you know, to bring it to, to make sure. I mean, I feel like my friends would probably say I'm a good listener too, even though I'm a great talker. So yeah. I, I think that you probably, um, just remembering uh, you as my counselor, I think that what's great, you have to have both sets of people because extroverts like you, Karen, are going to encourage people like me to let their guard down a little bit um, because we see you, um, you know, just being that person and having that level of energy. So I think the world would be a very boring place if <laughs> you only had one type of person, right? What, I mean, I, I do think that, that. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think that what I also learned was how to, the more I learned about myself, um, mm -hmm. and it's an ever evolving journey, but as an introvert, it allowed me to manage my energy. So when oh, I go yeah. to things like, um, That's a good one. you know, I would, I used to get on, um, stage at sales meetings and there would be, you know, three, 3,000 people in the crowd. And, um, you know, you're talking to all of these, you know, sales reps who are very energetic and very extroverted. And what I found was that, you know, I'm, I have some, I gear up for that week and, you know, I consciously work the room and, and meet a lot of people and, and listen to a lot of people and hear a lot of people. But right after that, I need like two solid days of just complete quiet. Mm -hmm. just like, I just need to just need quiet. Then just, just my thoughts. You just go in and put your earplugs in and, and go into the bath and just like, like oh. give me give me two days and I will talk again. <laughs> I'll be back out there. So um, let's see what time it is. Um, we got we just got a few more minutes. Oh my gosh! I know, I know. We got to like talk in. in oh, you know, I know. Well, we, have to, we have to finish up after this. We I, I want to hear all about what's happening with with Taryn in the Girl, shop. Just you know, love and life. <laughs> You know, I got to, out there is my backyard. I'm trying to decide if I'm going to take on a stray cat or not. Because, Ooh. I, I, well, if you do, I'll send you some product. So, um, you know, my, we make products for, you know, dogs and cats. So, but, but if I feel like if I start feeding him, it, it's going to make me sad when I can. And it, I just have oh. a whole issue with this. So I got to work through that. Oh. But that's what I've been up to lately, like trying to figure out, am I going to take on a stray cat? But if you do, if he, if that cat comes with you, make sure they're spayed and neutered. I know, but, but I would never be able to catch him, I don't think. That's the other thing. But anyway, we'll talk about that offline, how okay. I'm going right. to save, the, save the, all the animals. Save all the animals. So what, um, if you were, last, last few minutes um, it, on Instagram Live, and then we'd have to talk yeah. in real life. What does the future hold for Nakia? Ooh. Besides finding speakers, what else are you going to do? <laughs> <laughs> Um, you know, it's, it's funny before, if you had asked me, Taryn, probably seven years ago, I would have had a very defined track. I'm going to do this, this, and this, and this, and this. Mm -hmm. I think that's what they teach you in business school. Like everyone wants to be the CEO. Um, but now having kind of come into this space where, you know, my, I've, I've raised, you know, I've had young kids, they're not young anymore. Um, I'm sort of at this point in my life where I have, um, a little bit more, um, freedom in my career. I, I think I'm just open to anything and I don't really, I don't really put any, any definition on what that is. I think what I've learned to do is just embrace opportunity that feels mm. right to me. So if it, if it has this combination where, um, it looks like these are the things that I'm good at and it's going to give me a chance to, um, you know, really do something cool. Um, I'm open to that. Mm -hmm. I think the other thing for me also is, um, is ensuring where I am in my career, like I have a seat at the table. So, because if you, if you don't, if you, what I learned in my career as a, as a black woman is, um, when you're given these moments and opportunities, it is imperative for you to, um, you know, be in the room so that you can challenge um, some assumptions that people don't even know mm -hmm. they have. And you, and a lot of that I tend to do by listening and asking questions and kind of waiting for that moment to say, hmm, um, 
that's interesting. Uh, you know, I'd like to share a different perspective and, and see how you feel about this. Um, because if you're, for me, I want to be trying and, and, and proactively be in those spaces so that I can challenge a lot of the underlying assumptions because if you don't do it, no one else will do it, uh, will do it for us. And so mm -hmm. I think that we're kind of at this, this moment in time where, um, you know, you can push it a little bit. And I feel like we should, because, you know, we're, we're here, we're, mm -hmm. we're consumers. We, you know, buy these, buy these brands, we support businesses. They should also, um, you know, be supporting our communities and people mm -hmm. that, and people that look like us should be in those rooms, right? Helping to make decisions that positively impact people that look like us. And I think I'm looking for opportunities that allow me to continue to do that. Okay. And that's pretty much it. No, I like it. I like it. Embrace opportunity because I think some, yeah. Sometimes, you know, you do, like you said, you do get, you do get caught in that. This is my track. I'd be here by, you know, this age. I'm going to be here by this age. I'm going to have yeah. this by this age. And then you're kind of, you know, like you said, just caught in that track or in that, yeah. um, what's that, that wheel, you know, like yeah. the hands wheel, yeah. if, yeah. if you will. So embracing opportunity is something. And, and to your point of, of the now, like, yeah. you know, now is, it's just such a pivotal time, right? Yeah. Um, especially for us, it's just such a pivotal time that we can look at all those opportunities, survey them, and then embrace the ones that come towards us. So I really appreciate, oh, I think I'm freezing, but the internet is not letting me be great. But you can still hear me, beautiful. right? I'll hear you. Oh. There you go. I'm like, ah, but I will, I'm going to call you. I'm going to let you go. So the internet nope. doesn't, um, you know, give us the boot, but, um, okay. I'm going to call you in a few minutes. I'm going to, you know, get this all situated and I'm going to call you in a few minutes just to, you know, wrap it up. And I love oh. you. I'm so glad that I Aisha told you so me much. to pick up the phone and call you. <laughs> like I'm so, and I'm so glad that, you know, I, I did. Cause now, you know, we're connected again. So I'm so happy that I took that, that and I'm so glad you answered the call, most importantly. <laughs> Thank you for having me, Taryn. I love you, girl, and I'm gonna talk to you soon. I'll talk to you in a little bit. Okay. okay. Bye. Bye-bye.